And this is Rhea. Annabeth Malone biked down the beach listening to her iPod. She came all the way from, from uh, England to California to visit her Aunt Layla for a whole month. Annabeth was 11 years old. Aunt Layla's daughter, Kat, was 13. She was an excellent ballet dancer and studied at a boarding school for performing arts, but the school was only a mile away from Aunt Layla's house. Annabeth's phone rang. She pushed the brakes, pulled her headphones away from her ear, pulled her phone out of her pocket, and put it open. Hi, it's me, Kat. It's a cat. Listen, Annabeth, you know how you always solve mysteries? Yes, said Annabeth. It was true, she could solve mysteries as fast as Nancy Drew and Sherlock Holmes. My friend Jenna's in trouble. You've got to come, now, exclaimed Kat. All right, said Annabeth. She pulled her detective kit out of the bag, attached to the handlebars of her bike. Then she called Aunt Layla. Hello, she asked. No one picked up, so she sent a text. New mystery, got to go to cat school. I'll be back tonight. Then Annabeth backed over to cat school. Three girls stood at the school door, Cat and two other girls. Cat and Annabeth both looked alike, like both had straight dark hair and hazel eyes. One of the other girls had curly white blonde hair and blue eyes. The other had straight red hair and brown eyes. Hi, Annabeth, said Cat. This is Jenna, she gestured to the redhead, and Justina, she gestured to the blonde. So why'd you call me, asked Annabeth. Let's get up to the dorm room, said Cat. I'll tell you there. Annabeth locked her bike to the bike rack and swung her detective purse over her shoulder. She followed the three girls into the dorm room. We three don't sleep here, Jenna said quietly. I think you should interview us privately and interview Jenna, Justina first, said Kat. Okay, said Annabeth. Jenna and Kat left the, left the room. Annabeth pulled her special notebook out of her detective purse. It was dark pink with a small black lock attached to it. Annabeth removed the key from a secret pocket and did after first. Then she opened the lock. Okay, so what's the mystery, she asked. She recorded a whole interview in her notebook. It went like this. A, so what's the case? J, my sapphire and diamond earrings were stolen. A, classic, is that all? J, no, my grandmother gave them to me. She's rich and owns a shop which sells stuff like makeup, jewelry, and wigs. She gave me those earrings and some other things. This morning was the award ceremony. I set them on my nightstand because I planned to wear them. I went into the bathroom to change into a blue silk dress. When I came out, they were gone. Did you consider that they fell? Jay, yes, but I checked the floor in my closet and all. Besides, they were kept in a little black cardboard box. That was gone too. Hey, oh, do you suspect anybody? Jay, Jenna. Hey, but why? She was the only one in the room other than me in the room, and she was sleeping. She could have been faking it and got up and stolen the earrings. She said she didn't do it, but she could have lied. She takes acting classes. In fact, I was friends with her because I met her in acting class. A. If she's her friend, I doubt she'd steal it. J. She was my friend. We had a fight last month. I'm sure she was mad at me or something. A. Oh, well, when, when was it stolen? J. About 7.30 this morning. A. That's all I think I should know. Can you go and call Jenna? Jenna entered the room. She looked very nervous. Let's get started, said Annabeth. A, do you know anything about the case? Just the normal stuff. Justina told me all her thoughts. A, what's your side of the story? J, I woke up this morning wanting to put on my red sand dress with a war ceremony. But Justina flared up. She told the security guard that she thought I had stolen the earrings. The security guards will come in and check my room in a few hours. A, is that all? J, yes. Jenna left the room and Cap came in. A, what's your opinion about the old thing? I don't know who did it. It could be anyone. I left the door open when I exited the room. A. You don't seem to know much. C. I don't. A. Okay, that's all. Annabeth closed the notebook. Well, it's a Friday, so you're coming to stay at home for the weekend, she said. I know, said Kat. But Jenna and Justina aren't. They live in Washington. You can visit them tomorrow or on Sunday. You have to solve the mystery by Monday morning. That's when Jenna's trial is. Just then, Jenna, Justina, and another man entered the room. The man had shorter hair and wore glasses. I'm Miles, he said. Here to check Jenna's stuff for the earrings. He opened Jenna's closet and looked at a stack of shirts. He began picking up the shirts one at a time. He began picking up the shirts. 
After a few shirts, he found a small black box sunk into the box. He picked it up and opened it. In it were the earrings. I knew she was guilty, cried Justina. Calm down. I left the door unlocked when I exited the room. Anybody who came in and, and planted it. I didn't, somebody must have planted on Oh no, said Jenna. Miles handed the earrings to Justina. Here you go, he said. Young lady, you'll be in trouble, said Miles and nodded towards Jenna. Hold on, I want to say something, said Annabeth. She pulled a magnifying glass out of her parts and looked down at the shirt. Shirt box. The shirt, the box was found on through the lens. I see, light brown hair, said Annabeth. She got out a pair of tweezers and put the hair in a ziplock bag. Do you have any enemies with light brown hair? Annabeth inquired. No, there's Hannah Osborne, but she isn't really, began Jenna. I was helping Hannah this morning. She could have done it, said Kat. We will go home now, said Annabeth. After they got home, they had dinner. Then they went to Kat's room. Annabeth looked through her notebook again and again. I can't solve this mystery. It's like my main clue is staring me at the face, but I don't notice it, said Annabeth. Well, you looked through your notebook a hundred times. Maybe you should check out the hair, said Kat. I have a microscope. Brilliant, explained Annabeth. Kat brought the microscope out. Annabeth compared her hair to the brown hair. The brown hair is a real hair. That means I solved the mystery, she explained. Who did it, asked Kat. Justina, cried Annabeth. Justina? Annabeth, that, that, that's totally insane, said Kat. No, it isn't, Catherine Williams, said Annabeth. Look in my notebook. Kat looked through the notebook. You're right, she cried. We'll prove it tomorrow, said Annabeth. Do you have a camera with a built-in video camera? Yeah, said Kat. Bring it tomorrow, said Annabeth. The next day, they went back to the school. Can I check your closet and take photos, said Annabeth? Sure, said Justina. Annabeth found a light brown wig and photographed it. Justina didn't really notice what Annabeth was doing. Then Annabeth said, do you know anything about the brown hair? I didn't put those fake brown hairs there, exclaimed Justina, and say anything about fake hair. But I videotaped what you just said. You planted it in Justina's closet, didn't you? All right, I admit I did. I put the brown hair there, in case somebody noticed blonde strands. But brown is darker than blonde. I thought in case somebody, some blonde strands fell, nobody would notice. But how did you know I did it, asked Justina. You are so confident, Jenna, did it. And your granny sold wigs in her shop. Important clues in Annabeth. The end. <laughs>